How's everybody doing today? Uh, this is Pissed Rhino and uh, wanted to go over some stuff on the new build. Got a couple tricks and tips and um, I don't know, a few other things to go over. So let's uh, let's jump right in. So first thing I want to talk about are these two little things. Um, if you don't have one, you need to get one. These are magnetizers. Um, so what you can do is, I don't think this one's magnetized yet. Let's see. Yeah, so I don't know if, yeah, you can see that. It doesn't pick up the screws. So all you got to do is get one of these. And you place it on there and you slide it towards the end. You go pretty slow. And then there you go. That's all it takes. Um, they also demagnetize, which I don't think they demagnetize as good as the others, but, or as they magnetize, but. They still demagnetize. Yeah. You gotta do it a little slower. Well, now I magnetized it again. Anyway, it works. Yeah, there you go. You just gotta get it just right to demagnetize. See, it's magnetized further up because I didn't run it farther up. But at the base, it's demagnetized. So, uh, these two, both of them are made. Well, this one's a Wera. And this one is Klein. This one's about 20 bucks, and this one's about 8 bucks. Um, the cheaper one works just as well. Um, demagnetizing, you've got to get it just right. And they're great to have around your, your workbench because there's times you're going to want to have things magnetized and there's times that you don't want things magnetized. Um, and you can even magnetize, you know, your, your other tools, not just screwdrivers. And uh, it'll help you out during your build, especially if you're doing like the bead locks. Uh, if you're doing bead locks, you need to have a magnetizer so you can magnetize the little screwdriver you get with them. So, all right. So next, uh, I wanted to go through the trail parts that I got. Um, here's the brass transmission plate. Very good quality. It's got some weight to it. Um, next, I've got the, the their new brass links. Um, one thing, I learned this from my son, but if you're really wanting flex, all you have to do is remove the O-rings. So there's an O-ring on each side holding this pivot ball in well if you remove those o-rings you get a lot more flex um, the links become a little loose but when you're flexing it gives them a lot more side to side which is what you need for good flex um, I think I'm gonna put these on regular um, first and see um, if I like it if I need more flex I'll take some overings out um, so that's a little trick that you need to know of uh, so that uh, you can get the best performance out of your out of your little mini truck um, next thing I'm kind of disappointed about and these are the trail 
drive shafts. Um, you know, I, I beat up on Enjora a lot because, you know, a lot of what they make is junk. But I'll tell you what, as far as drive shafts go, um, Enjora seems to be just a little bit better. And the reason why I say that is this connection here is rough. If you push one direction or the other, you can feel that it could get caught up. It's like sandpaper. That should really be smooth. Um, because if you're flexing and you've got, I mean, it could get hung up very easily. And I just don't like that. I mean, none of the other drive shafts I've used are that way. Even the little one, it's just like sandpaper. Um, they could have used a little time, a little more time in the polisher so that you didn't have that issue. So I went ahead and ordered uh, an, actually two new sets from GPM. And the reason I ordered two sets is I think I'm going to go ahead and extend the front end on this, on this ripper. I'm going to build it properly first and then decide if I'm going to extend the front. Um, and of course I'll document that for the, for the series here so that everybody can see what I do to extend the front. Um, so look forward to that. It'll be something a little different. Um, next I have the transmission case. I went ahead and put the motor inside. Um, one thing with the Furitech motors is that the holes don't line up perfectly on, on these transmission cases. So instead of damaging the motor, instead of buying a motor plate, all you have to do is on the inside of the inside screw, um, take a little drill bit and take a little aluminum off so that this one lines up. Sorry about that. I think Amazon just showed up, so my dogs are going crazy. I love them, but man, they're annoying sometimes. Okay, so the in, you've got your two screws. This screw on the inside, let's say the right-hand side, when you're looking straight at it, you just take a little off the left side of the screw hole and the screws will line up perfectly. So you don't need a special plate. Um, I, I guess if you don't have a, a shoot, a drill or a hand drill, because I just used a battery powered drill. Um, I mean, the old Craftsman. But if you have any of them, you don't need something this big. Um, but at some point, I guess we should talk about tools anyway, but I won't do that right now. I don't want to bore you. Um, but another option, I like these handheld, um, screwdrivers. These are kind of nice for, for working. I don't use them on the micro. RCs, but um, on the other, the bigger RCs, I use them. So, anyway, that's always an option to have in your toolbox. But grab your drill. I know everybody's got a drill somewhere out in the garage, in a toolbox somewhere. Grab it. Just lightly drill off the inside there, shave some aluminum off, and um, it'll fit perfect. Um, I haven't built a transmission yet. I'm waiting um, because I want to talk to you about the next thing, which are the internal gears. So I've used these on two projects, Enjora, stainless steel, and these are the 40 to something to one. Uh, I'm not quite sure of the gear, but these are low, low, low gears. 
So your TX4M, even with a brushless motor, is not going to really move fast at all um, from experience. And, and that's fine if you're a dedicated crawler. Um, and that's why I use these gears is because the things I build are usually dedicated for comp crawlers or um, even homegrown crawlers like stock body. You want to have a nice set of gears and these are really low and um, going slow is easy with these. But Mias has come out with their gears. And the reason I bought these one is for the pins. So I need the pins to run this because I don't have a stock transmission anymore that has the pins in it. Um, because I didn't buy a TRX4M for this build. I bought one for the last build for stock body. That was a brand new TRX4M. And so I had these in the stock transmission that I could put in the Enjoyers. But so I basically bought this whole kit just for those pins. But then I'm looking at it and I noticed that these are 25 87 ones. And so these are going to be crawler gears, but not as bad as the Endures. Meaning this is in between the <clears throat> stock, which is 16 something. Um, and then you've got these. I don't really like the look of these. I don't like pressed metal. Um, because, especially in brass. brass one thing about brass parts is you can scratch them, you can wear them. They have a lot of wear. Um, that's why, you know, brass, bu brass bushings need to be replaced because they wear, they don't slide very well. You don't have to worry about sliding on these, but I don't know. So I'm at a crossroads. I'm, I got a dilemma. <clears throat> do I throw the Endurers in or do I try the Mias? So comment below what you think, what you would like to see me use. Um, because it's it's kind of important to the build. So these are crawler gears, but not as slow as the Endurers. Um, so let me know what you think. Should I try out the Mias or should I stick with the Endurers, which I know what they do. Um, so comment below. Let me know your feelings. Um, this set, the Mia set, also came with the bearings and everything for less than the Endurers. So these cost a lot less than the Endurers. So let me know your thoughts. Um, another thing I've got here is the light bar and the headlights for the Ripper chassis. Um, I don't have the Ripper chassis yet because um, I'm waiting on the injection molded version. Um, but I've got the lights ready. I'm not, I'm not a fan of lights just because of all the wires that are involved. And <clears throat> it can really make your build look like crap. But maybe with the Ripper chassis, you can hide these wires. I'm not sure. But we'll find out. So that's another thing. Um, lastly, and this is hard for me because... As I stated earlier, Injora doesn't make very good stuff. Um, I had a set of their 53 millimeter shocks and they were just too short for me. Um, and I know that's the stock height and that's what they should have been, but um, just not, not what I was wanting. So when the 59 millimeter Injoras came out, I ordered a set. And here they are. And honestly, again, this pains me, but these look pretty good. I mean, they're still small. Would I want to go with 60s or 65s or 70s? Yes. But I'm going to try these first. So, Ripper build will be on Endura shocks because they feel pretty good. They're smooth. The 
action's great. Okay, so that's enough talking about those. Those are great. Um, we're going to install them on Ripper Build, and we'll see uh, how they work. So if you're an Enjoyer fan, I apologize. I like the look of their 59mm shocks. I like their their transmission gears, even though it should come with everything like the Mias does. And I think that's it. Those are my two Enjoyers. Um, I think that's enough to have on a build. Um, but, you know, I might put the Mias in. But I want your input. Mias, Enjoyer, tell me which ones I should use. All right, so I think that's all the parts I have on my desk. Um, one thing you'll notice is my desk is new. I got my little shelf that I was talking to you guys about. I got my light up here, which helps a little bit, I hope. Um, and then my new sign that I made. Um, all those stickers are parts that I've purchased. Uh, so I'm advertising for everybody. Uh, nothing I get is free. So all those stickers are from manufacturers and makers of products that I like. Um, I've even got Enjora up there because I do like their shocks. Um, <clears throat> Maz Design sticker. Oh, that's my favorite sticker out of all of them. Uh, the MD. Uh, and that's the guy that makes the beadlock wheels. And the beadlock greens, those titanium beadlock greens, which are going to look really good on this build. NSDRC, the servos, Little Guy. Uh, Little Guy makes the tires that I love. Um, you can see both sets up on the shelf are Little Guy Racing um, tires. I got Flub RC up there. I've purchased some sliders from them they, they actually made some of the best sliders uh, so uh, they also make the kit for your shocks if you want to go with hot racing or the basically the low c shocks uh, they make a conversion kit to make them work really well with the trx for him beast mode rc they make my chassis um, they've made all my chassis up to this one which i'm 90% sure I'm going to use the Ripper. Um, I'm still thinking if I want to do another beast mode. Uh, I don't know what design I want. Um, so that's really hard for me. Uh, so I'm kind of just simmering on that. Uh, what else? GoPro. Uh, I'm not using a GoPro right now. But I've got um, two GoPro 10s. And one GoPro Max, the 360 uh, camera. I use those on my <clears throat> on my real cars. Um, you know, I've had a lot of really cool vehicles over the years, and uh, I use those for you know polls, um, testing, and so on and so forth. So hopefully, I can use them. Maybe I'll make a cool little video one day of all the crawlers but uh we'll see how that works out uh trail and mias both great suppliers power hobby everything i've bought from power hobby has been really good um in beast mode they made the battery tray um i think that's the only thing i've been using lately but some of their c hubs are freaking awesome looking. Uh, TRBs, the uh, bearings that I've been using. Um, what else? I think that's it. Other than my Pistrino Rhino and my Pistrino logo. Um, so, anyway, I made that up. I was bored. And I didn't want to make any parts videos, so... Um, I did that, and now we've got a nice little setup here that I hope is easier for everybody to see. Um, so, that's it on that. 
What else did I want to talk about? Um, I think that's it. We went over a lot of stuff in a short period of time. Um, the Enjoyer 59mm shocks seem great. Um, the brass transmission plate is top notch. Trail drive shafts, I'm not fond of at all. And this is like the first trail part that I don't like. Um, so I don't know if they outsource these or what, but these just are not trail quality what I expect from trail. <clears throat> their brass links, which are beautiful. I mean, these links are top notch. See, this is the quality I expect. I'm trying to get it under the light there, but anyway, this is what trail is known for. Um, we talked about how to get the motor to line up in a transmission case to make it easy to install. Uh, we talked about the Mia lights for the Ripper. Um, and we talked about the transmission gears. Again, I need your input. Should I try the Mias or should I stick with the Endures? Um, then we talked about our magnetizers and demagnetizers. Uh, they work great. They look like, I'll be honest, the picture on Amazon for this one looked like it was a big handheld device. It's not. It's tiny, but it works perfectly. I mean, I never even, I mean, I remember having a magnet back in the day, just an old speaker magnet, and I would, you'd rub your screwdriver on it for a little bit, and then it would be a little bit magnetized, but using these you get a lot of magnetized um shoot i don't know how you even say it anyway it does the job really well it takes just a second to use so grab one like i said i think this one's like six to eight bucks so if you don't want to spend 12 to 20 on one of these buy one of these and it'll it will magnetize perfectly and demagnetize it takes a little bit but it takes a little bit on this one too because you, you gotta know what you're doing you gotta follow the directions um, which I don't like to do all the time but you get my drift uh, what else um, the axles are all built my electronics are ready to go we got the servos really if the chassis showed up tomorrow, I could probably build the whole thing. I think I've got everything I need. I mean, I got some things coming like a brass battery tray. Um, it's not here yet. Oh, I need the Mias servo mounts. Those take forever to get. I haven't found anybody that has those in stock, like a A Main Hobbies or a, any of the hobby stores. So you usually have to buy a direct from Mias. They're not on uh, on eBay at all. So you either got Amazon or straight from Mias. But even Amazon is, I believe, straight from Mias because it, you know, their dates are, you know, three to four weeks out. So. It's kind of a pain in the ass but it's something you got to have if you're going to do a, a good build so we're waiting on those i will probably go ahead and build the transmission maybe even today um, and get that ready to go uh, but i need to know on the gears you guys let me know i need your input um also i'd like to shout out to everybody um I started doing this just for fun um, and that's all I'll ever do it for is just for fun but you guys have been amazing such all the positive comments um, I've you know emailed with people I've texted with people uh, it's just great I mean I if, 
you know, if I can help you guys out, I would love to. So if, if there's if there's something that you need or something that you need to know about, um, put put a message in, you know, put a comment in, and I'll do a show on it. Show, I, you know, I'll do a professional show. I'll do a little video on it because that's all I ever do is little videos. Um, but if I can help you guys, just let me know. If there's something, you know, even if it's hobby wide, and not just TRX4M, I, I've been, you know, I've been doing this for 35 years. So um, any information you need, if I know it, I'll tell you. If not, I'll find it for you. So, but thank you all. Um, you don't understand how it makes me feel when I get positive comments um, or when I get shout outs. Um, it, it just makes me feel great. So I hope you enjoy the videos. Um, if you need anything, let me know. Uh, comments are always welcome. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.